Hello, this is Dr. Antuf and welcome to a new series in our photography tutorials. In this series, we are going to do still life photography. And when we say still life, it means we are going to shoot some objects. In today's session, we are going to use some cups and we are going to use an acrylic black base, some roses and rose water. And here we are going to have a nice contrast. The contrast is between the roses and the rose water. So it's a nice combination between the rose itself and the rose water. So in our work, we are going to do different compositions. We will distribute the items in different ways. There is no one lighting setup for all the compositions that we are going to do. So what we are going to do is we do a certain composition and then we will look what will be the better or the best lighting setup for this composition and then we are going to shoot. So for every composition, we are going to do a different lighting setup based on the composition itself. Let's have an idea about the items that we are going to use. First, the acrylic base, which is the most important thing. The acrylic is a certain type of plastic that has a very high reflection surface. It's like a mirror but in black color. So it will be very nice in photography and it will produce very nice results. Acrylic is found in different colors. It could be white or red or blue or any other color. But the most used one in photography is the black one. And also we use white from time to time. In our series today we are going to use the black and the white in different compositions that we are going to do. So, uh, the rose water that we are going to use might not be very saturated red color. It might be light red color. If it happens to be light red, I will use some food coloring in red color to enhance the redness of the liquid. This will be more appealing in the photography in the final results. One final note for the acrylic. Acrylic grasp dust very easily. Any piece of dust flying in your room will directly go to the acrylic. Therefore, it's better to clean the acrylic before you take the shot. Although we are going to do that, but at the end there will be dust in the final pictures. Therefore, we will use Photoshop to remove these dusts. So be prepared that we are going to use Photoshop to clean our picture, our final picture. A final note before we start. Still life photography has no limits. It depends totally on the imagination of the photographer. We use the same item, but we change the composition every time. What we mean by composition is distributing the items. We can distribute the same items in different ways and we can change the lighting in every time. And therefore we will end up with a different picture each time. So it's totally related to your imagination. The more creative you are, the more ideas and different results you get. So, Let's try to do as many different combinations as we can and see the results that we have. As you saw, in still life, the most important thing is composition. So we took our time. We selected where to put the white rose, where to put, where to put the red roses, where to put our cups and everything. So take your time and find the best composition that you like for the setup. Once done, we can start with lighting our setup. We need to learn two things about our cups. Cups are transparent glass. Therefore, there's a difference when we use hard light or soft light on them. When using soft light, probably we are going to use a softbox. And in this tutorial, we are only going to use softboxes for soft light. 
So since the glass has no color, it will take the color of the light that we will put in front. So the softbox has a white color on the fabric that's on the top of the softbox. This white color will be casted and reflected on the glass itself. So the soft light will give us the shape of the cup. If it's circular, we will see circular white strip or strap on the, on the cup. So soft light will help us to, to, to see the shape, the design of the cup. If we use hard light, hard light does not have a color because hard light doesn't have in front of, of it any fabric or any material. So the hard light will only light the bounds of the cup. For example, the top, the, the circular part, if hard light is going to hit it, we are going to see a circle. Also, we are going to see the circle at the bottom or in the middle and so on. So hard light will give us something like the contour of our cup, while soft light will give us the design and the shape. So we can mix between hard light and soft light in one setup to see different things in our cups. There's no one formula how to light these things. In fact, it's a matter of taste. So I will start in lighting. I will put probably a soft box, take a shot. I will study it. If I don't like it, I will specify what are the things that I don't like in the lighting and then I will fix them till I reach the lighting that I like and take the final shot. This is the result of the first setup. Before we explain the picture, let's have a fast look on the setup itself. The setup is very simple. Currently it contains only one light which is a softbox. We numbered this on the picture by number 1. So the softbox is directed directly towards the cups and we are taking the picture. Returning to the result, as a first look, one might think that this picture looks nice and the lighting is nice. But in fact, or at least to my taste, this picture has a photographic problem. The problem is the reflection of the softbox on the cups. Yes, to wrap up, we said earlier that when we use a soft light on a transparent glass, this will help us by showing the design of this glass. And this is what appeared in this picture. Now we can see the structure of the cups very clearly. And the reflection, the white rectangle on the cups, is due to the white fabric on the front of the softbox which is reflected on the cups. So this is something that we want and it is good at the same time. But the thing that I don't like in this reflection is the width of the white reflection. I personally think that this white reflection is very wide and I would like to narrow it. And this is what we are going to do in a second in this tutorial. So, one softbox will give this result, I don't like the width of the reflection on the glass and I would like to narrow it. Before we continue, a curious question is, how does the same picture look if we don't shoot it using studio light? In other words, if we only use ambient light. And when I say ambient light, it means we are using the light in the room. No flashlight, no speed lights, nothing. So, if we only use the light in the room. How does this picture appear? It will look like this picture. You can see that it's totally a different image. Not only it's not artistic, but also it's not beautiful at all. First, you can now see that the backdrop has a black cloth that has a different black intensity than the acrylic. It's now visible by the naked eye. Moreover, the cups doesn't look artistic at all. This is because now cups are receiving light from all the studio light that we have inside our studio and therefore there are too many reflections which are producing non-artistic results. Also you can see that the white rose is overexposed and this is because we have too much light in the studio and when we took this picture using the ambient light we metered from the cups and not from the rose which resulted in an overexposed rose. So the picture is not beautiful at all it's not artistic and it's totally different than the thing that we are doing. If we look once again to the artistic one taken by the softbox, you can see as if it is a totally different world, 
something that doesn't have any similarity with the previous one. So now I'm going to convert my softbox to a strip box since I don't have a strip box. There are two ways to do it. You can either buy a special fabric that you put on the softbox which converts it to a strip box and I don't have it as well. And the second solution is to use anything to act like a gobo and I'm using here black foam board. I will clamp more than two, two foam boards together to have a tall gobo and I will put it in front of the softbox. By this, I will narrow the size of the softbox and I will convert it to a strip box. So this is the result of adding the gobo to our softbox. So once again we are converting our softbox to a strip box. Yes, there is something called a strip box that you can use in photography, but it is expensive. And since you don't use it all the time, you might prefer to convert your softbox to a strip box. And in my case, this is what I did by adding some gobos to my softbox. Let's see the setup once again. So now the setup has two things. Number one is our softbox and number two is the gobo. So once again, what is a gobo? A gobo is anything that you put between your subject and the light, which blocks light from coming. In my case, I was using black foam board. So you can put anything that can block the light. So the gobo is set on the left of the softbox, preventing part of the light from reaching our cups. This means that not all the light now will hit the cups and it should produce the desired effect. If we go back to the picture, so this is the result of using one gobo on our softbox. Let's compare it with the previous shot that was taken without any gobo to see by how much this gobo decreased the width of the reflection. So we can see that there is a really big difference not only by the size of the reflection but also by the overall light on the picture. The picture without any gobo is brighter than the picture with one gobo. And this is logical because without any gobo all the light is hitting our target. But when we add the first gobo, not all the light will hit the target so less light will hit it and therefore we will have a little bit darker picture. But this is not an issue because we will handle it later on by adding more things to our setup. Now we are focusing only on the reflection of the glass. So we can see that the reflection is narrower and for my taste I see it's more beautiful. But we're not there yet. I would like to have this reflection even more narrow. So simply we are going to add another gobo from the other side. So let's do it. So this is the result of using two gobos and we can clearly see now that the reflection is much narrower and the overall picture is darker. Before entering into details, let's have a look to the setup used this time. So this setup has three things. Number one is our softbox and number two and three are our gobos. Now these gobos are preventing a lot of light from hitting the cups and therefore they are narrowing the reflection on the glass. By adding these two gobos, we are having what we call a strip box. So a strip box is a narrow softbox that throw light in a narrow area. So if you go back to the result, so this picture is the result of using two gobos. Let's do some comparisons. Let's compare this picture with the one with only one gobo. So we can see that with one gobo, the reflection was wider and adding two gobos narrowed it a lot. Now if you, if you go back to the first picture that was without any gobo, we see how the picture was bright much more and the reflection was really big. Now if we jump directly from this picture to the one with two gobos to see the main differences, we can see how the reflection is much narrow and the overall picture is darker. So it's a matter of personal taste. To me, I believe that the width of this reflection is good. If you like it even narrower, 
you can narrow the distance between the gobo that you put in front of the softbox. If you like the reflection to be wider, you can increase the distance between the gobos in front of the softbox. So, you can change the size based on the position of your gobos up to your taste. So, after I'm satisfied with the width of the reflection, let's continue by focusing on the overall light of the picture since now it's a little bit dark. For sure we are going to add another light source. So, since I didn't like the size of the reflection of the softbox on the cups, I decided to do the gobo or to convert my softbox into a strip box. In my first trial, I did only one gobo. It decreased the size, but I still didn't like it. I wanted it even smaller. So I did the other gobo, which is from foam boards, and I narrowed the size of the softbox a lot. By that, I got the small strip of light that I was looking for. But for sure, the whole environment was not very bright, it was almost dark. I don't want it to be really very bright, I want something in between, something romantic. Therefore, I decided to light the setup by using a spotlight. And I did put my spotlight on the boom stand, because I wanted the spotlight to be directly above my composition. The spotlight will only give us the boundaries of the cups, something like a contour. So, we will do a shot with only the spotlight without the softbox so you can see the effect by itself. By lighting with a hard light, a spotlight on the setup, I will see all the boundaries of the cups and the roses will get some light. And the softbox will do the other thing which, give, which gives us the shape of the cups. Together, they will produce a very nice shot that I'm looking for. Let's take the shot and see the result. Now this picture is the result of using a spotlight. If we have a look on the setup, the setup is as follows. We have in this particular example, one light which is number four, which is above the cups. And this light is a hard light, it's a spotlight, and usually to do a spotlight, you use a strobe and you add to it a reflector and a honeycomb grid. The job of the honeycomb grid is to decrease the area of the light, and if you'd like to have more ideas about them, you can review my Photography 101 series. This spotlight, which is a hard light, will result in the following picture. The nature of the hard light on the glass is totally different than the soft light. Now we can see that the edges of the cups are more clear, we can see the circle at the top of the cup is more clear, and we can see the intersection between the cup and its base and so on. And since we are using a soft light, it will not spread a lot. Therefore, we can see that the rose papers in the middle of the picture have more light than the rose paper on the left. This is because that the spotlight will not spread a lot. If we compare this picture with the one before which was taken using a softbox, we can see it's a totally different result. The softbox is giving the shape of the cups and the cups are more clear to us while in the previous one we only saw the edges and also the nature of the light is different moreover that the softbox is seated to the left therefore we can see here a left light hitting our cups so the straight question now is what will happen if we combine both lights together in this picture and this is what we are going to do So in this final picture, we see the combination of the two lights producing the result that we want. Once again, let's have a fast look on the setup. The setup is composed of four items. Item number one is the softbox, which is the main light. Item number four is the second light, which is a hard light directed directly over the cups. And items number two and three are the gobos, which prevent all the softbox from hitting the cups. So it's a combination between soft light and hard light, and the result is this picture. This picture has all the targets that we wanted. It has a narrow reflection on the glass, 
and at the same time a good bright image. We achieve the brightness by adding the spotlight to the picture. And we achieve the narrowness of the reflection by adding the gobos to the soft light. If we have another look to the picture without using the spotlight, we can directly see how the picture was darker but it had correct amount of reflection on the glass. And once again if you have a look to the spotlight alone, we can see that there was some brightness on the roses but the cups did not look appealing at all. So by combining both lights together, we reached the target that we wanted.